Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com. Thanks for joining me again. And in today's video, uh, which is going to be a couple part series video, I'll be taking you through the process of analyzing your room acoustic and then finally in the end doing your room equalization. Basically what it means is we're going to uh, use measurement tools to find out the acoustic properties of our speakers and our room and then do equalization adjustments using uh, either acoustic panels and then uh, equalizers to actually um, adjust all the different frequencies that have different levels, peaks and dips, so that our frequency response from our speakers, what we hear in our ears, is as flat as possible. Now to be able to analyze our room, we're going to need a couple of uh, tools to be able to measure uh, our room acoustics. One thing we will need is a reference microphone. Uh, the second we're going to need is, is an SPL meter. And thirdly, we will require a software that's going to use those tools to give us a graph of the room acoustic response. And fourth, we also need a patch cable. Uh, I have a, a very short TRS patch cable, just uh, so that this will allow us to do some referencing. And I will tell you all about when we're going to need it and why we need it uh, later on in the video. So we, you need one of these as well. Now the first thing and the most important thing that we need is a reference microphone. Why a reference microphone and not just any microphone? Well, the, the truth to the fact is that most microphones that are used for vocal recording or instrument recording, um, they have some colorations. They're not really flat. They're designed in such a way so that they enhance some of the uh, characteristics of the sound that you're trying to record. That's why you have you know, a, a vocal microphone that enhances the vocal characteristics. You'll have another microphone which enhances sort of the uh, kick drum uh, characteristics of a drummer. Um, and then another microphone which will have in, the enhancements of a, you know, electric guitar uh, recording and other instruments recording. So they have colorations, we cannot use them. That's why we need a reference uh, measurement microphone. One of the cheapest and the most common available is the Behringer's um, ECM 8000. I got this off eBay for about $99 delivered. So, um, and it's very common and it will do the job for you. You can go and spend thousands of dollars on reference microphones. That is if you are in the industry, uh, you have a, you know, um, a big studio and you most likely need that. But for us, home recording studios, professional and semi-professional level, this will do just fine. There are a few other ones as well available from, I think from DBX, uh, which is about a couple hundred dollars, but this is probably the cheapest one. And this is what the ECM 8000 microphone looks like. And it is an omnidirectional microphone. That's another difference between other uh, microphones as well. Being omnidirectional microphone, it means it's picking up signals in a sphere on top of it, not just only one direction. Because you want this microphone to listen to the room in every direction and not just the direction of the sound that it's coming through. Again, being condenser, it does require 48 volts uh, phantom power. So I will, I will show you how and where to set this microphone up when we're doing the measurements. Now, the next tool that we actually need is an SPL meter. You can go and purchase one from, uh, I guess, electronic shop or music shop, um, maybe some eBay, but I found a really cheap one uh, and I use it on my iPhone. And it's called the SPL meter. It's probably about uh, four or five dollars or thereabouts. I can't remember how much I paid for it. It actually will tell you, you know, it's not accurate to, the, to it, but it will do the job because we're not really looking at 100% accuracy. You know, we just the right amount will, will do fine uh, for what we're trying to achieve. And this is what it looks like. Um, hopefully I'll get a, a snapshot and put it up on the screen. So that's the uh, iPhone. And that will give us a measurement of the sound level that the speakers are producing. Because uh, during the process, we need to be able to adjust the level of the sound coming out of the speakers 
and be able to measure it so we know how loud the speakers are so that when we do the measurements and we know what the microphone is listening to, we know what the levels were so we can reference it as such. Now the final tool that we need to do our uh, room acoustic measurement is the software. The software is called Room EQ Wizard and it's a free software and it will do not just room analysis, it will do a whole heap of things. So we're just only going to look at the room analysis and graphing side of it um, and hopefully later on you'll be able to play around with that software and even get more out of it. To download the software, I will put the link here as well as in the description. Uh, you can just visit uh, roomeqwizard.com and follow the instructions of how to download it. The Room EQ Wizard does run on Windows as well as Mac. So you can, whatever platform you are using, you'll be able to use it. And I will demonstrate Room EQ Wizard on my Mac. One of the first steps we need to do uh, once we've got the Room EQ Wizard uh, downloaded and ready to go, installed, is um, use this patch cable. Um, and I will show you the process in the Room EQ Wizard. Basically, I will demonstrate uh, this process on my Presonus 1818 VSL, which is right there. Um, but it doesn't matter what other audio interface you have, the, the process is the same. So you just have to work out how um, it works with your audio interface. What we need to do um, is connect one of the outputs of your audio interface into the inputs of the same audio interface. Create a loopback so that the uh, Room EQ Wizard can send the signal to one of the outputs and then listen to it back to the input of it and then work out what the characteristic of the audio interface is. So in my example, I will connect output 2 into input 2 as um, line levels and let uh, Room EQ Wizard uh, do the testing. So go ahead and connect your audio interface with the loop cable and follow up next of how we actually do the referencing of the audio interface. Well, I hope you went ahead and downloaded the uh, Room EQ Wizard. I have it on my desktop, so let's just run it. And I'm hoping that you have your loop cable connected. I have mine connected from output 2 to input 2. We click on Preferences. And then we select our audio output device and input device. Uh, in my case, it's AudioBox 1818 VSL, um, and in my input channel is right, which is channel 2. So we click on Calibrate. There's plenty of instructions on the screen to follow to know what to do, and so once you've read that, you can click Next. Basically, in the next step, the uh, software will send out a 1 kilohertz tone, and uh, it's going to listen to it uh, to the input, and it will ask us to adjust the level so that it you know matches to the output level. So uh, just watch out for your headphone uh, or you know your speaker volume because it's going to be high level of tone coming out. So let's go. Okay, so we now have our volume set, um, so the input and the output matches. The next step is going to do audio sweep. So again, watch out for your volume levels. And it's done. So we can click finish and have a look at the graph and which is the frequency response of AudioBox 1818 VSL input 2. Now I have to mention that input 2 is um, an instrument input. So I'm not sure how much difference it makes uh, instead of line level input. 
Unfortunately, um, the Room EQ Wizard only sees input 1 and 2 and output 1 and 2, so I could not use input 3 for this um, testing. But I think if we look at the graph, it looks like pretty straightforward all the way through. You know, minus 3 dB at about 3 point something hertz all the way to, um, you know, 22 kilohertz. And if we look at, um, uh, that's a logarithmically, if you look at it linearly, uh, we can actually see how, you know, there's a slight sort of um, dropping down, which is quite normal for any uh, audio interface. So that's the reference signal that we have for our audio interface. Once we've done that, uh, next we need to do is we can actually disconnect the uh, loopback and connect our reference microphone. So uh, I'll show you how to do that. Now that we have our audio interface all calibrated, all referenced uh, ready, the next thing we need to do is set up the microphone. Uh, basically it's uh, simple as setting up in any microphone your sweet spot, which is an equilateral triangle between the two speakers and the microphone. So what I normally do is I measure the distance between the middle of the speakers and use that to adjust the volume there and then pretty much as you can see it's right there. So um, that's an equilateral triangle and the height is about where normally the tweeters would be, uh, would, would be sitting. So it picks up the volume around here. Now you can play around and uh, to see what sort of results you get by bringing it a little bit further down and up, but it's up to you. It's just um, a measurement that we want to do. So once you have all that set up, the next thing we need to do is uh, to calibrate our speaker level, the SPL level. So we need to work out how loud the speakers are when the software is generating a tone. And again, that's uh, quite simple. What we need to do is get our handy SPL meter, um, turn it on, and we need to measure it. So let me just run it again for you. That's my SPL meter right there. So what we need to do is put on the doll and find out uh, the level that's coming. And usually the software will tell you, and that's about 75 dB SPL. So we, I normally set it about where the microphone is and let it, and I'd adjust the speaker volume until it says around 75 dB. So um, to do that, we go into the preferences again and We select main speakers and then we click on um, check level, follow the instructions. So I'm just going to adjust the volume and And done. My SPL meter was reading about um, 75, 76 dBL, uh, SPL, dB, SPL, whatever. Um, so that's the volume that we need to have it. Well, the next thing we need to do is adjust the microphone level uh, so that it is 
referenced by the speakers. Um, so the system knows, uh, now that the system knows what the level of the speakers are, we need to adjust the microphone level so it knows the input and the output for its reference when it's doing the audio switch. So we follow the same procedure. Again, we click on check levels for main speakers and click next. And then we'll adjust our microphone And what I did there is adjust the microphone input level so that it shows minus around minus 18 dB. So that it's reference. So it's outputting uh, 12 minus 12 dB, 75 uh, dB SPL, and the input is 18 dB. So now once we've done that, the next step is doing the audio sweep measurement. To do the audio sweep measurement is basically we click on measure and I have put in four second delay because when we're doing the measurements we need to be actually away from the environment so we don't distract any of the uh, pickup pattern of the microphone so I just put in four second delay enough time for me to run away from here to the back uh, of the room and let it do the audio sweep so let's do the audio sweep now Okay, it's done. Let's have a look at that screen. Now this is in, uh, in very high detail. So what we uh, really need to do, um, I usually go down the graph, you know, um, one third octave smoothing, um, you know, um, which is just enough to give us um, indication of what it will, the graph looks like. So it looks like pretty smooth. It does have when we look at uh, around 75, 76 dB. So it has a, a little bit of peak um, at around 136 Hertz, a little bit of dip down at four kilohertz, um, and the rest is pretty much okay. So um, yeah, so you can do as many measurements as you like. You can take uh, room acoustic panels in and out to see what difference it will make. Uh, and you know reflectors and deflectors and absorbers and all of those things and once you have worked out um, and got a pretty reasonable level of um, graph from your speakers and the final bits and pieces we can actually do that which is uh, with equalization which is the next step so in my case uh, I've pretty much uh, done okay here the only thing I need to do is um, equalize um, about 135 uh, and um, and bring up about four kilohertz so and that should fix it so I probably need about two or three EQ points uh, parametric EQ points and adjust those levels so this my room sounds um, correct well I'm actually hoping that this was uh, informative enough for you and you'll be able to follow it up and now you know how to uh, calibrate your audio interface, hook up the microphone and then do room measurements, acoustic measurements and then being able to use that data to uh, you know work out what uh, acoustic treatment you need for your room um, as well as later on doing the equalization for the fine tuning of those frequencies. And until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio!